that leftover Thanksgiving turkey and what to do when you have a lot of it. And you're live here. Okay, are we live? We are live. We are live. That is awesome. Okay, so weigh yeah, in. Uh, I haven't got what? you up on the screen yet, so we will go on the screen. You are live on both All right. on screen. So weigh in and tell us what you're doing today and tomorrow and the next day. What does Thanksgiving weekend look like for you? Are you one of the folks that go out and do Black Friday shopping? Or are you one of the folks that set up Christmas? Or are you one of the folks that travel to visit family? Or are you one of the folks that just kind of chill for the weekend? So weigh in, tell us where you're, where you're coming from. City and state is always great. We love to greet you from all around the country and actually the world. And so let us know where you are right now and so we can greet you properly and we're going to talk about some really fun things tonight um things to do with leftover thanksgiving turkey but then we're also going to do a double feature tonight and we're going to have a special show on black friday shopping hauls so it's going to be a great great show pardon, pardon me youtube people is it fuzzy a little fuzzy there we a go a little fuzzy <laughs> Okay, so can we greet some people while we're waiting for everybody to jump on? Uh, well, we've got four, com five comments on Facebook. Let me get over there. Okay. Um, hold on. I've got new windows open today. I'm not. Here we go. Okay. Um, Brenda Riffle says she shared our show. Oh, thanks, Jacob Brenda. Jacob said, "What are you doing this evening?" Oh, hi, Jacob. Turkey and leftovers, four recipes, four or five things to do with that. And Karen says hello from Ohio. Hi, Karen from Ohio. I hope it's cool there because we are we had to actually turn on our, our swamp coolers yesterday. We broke a record here in Arizona for heat, which is nuts. We're all ready for the colder weather, and we're not getting that. It was kind of cooling off about a week ago, but then it got hot again. So who else do we want to say hi to? Um, I'll have to look in a second. Just a okay. Second. Um, it's so great to have you and then if you could pop on to the other camera and we could say hi and greet people there too turkey leftovers do you have turkey leftovers did you cook turkey for thanksgiving some people don't even cook turkey for thanksgiving i've heard of people cooking hams for thanksgiving or having italian food for thanksgiving so what do you do there's so many things we can talk about tonight what do you do for thanksgiving dinner and what do you do for thanksgiving weekend and hi to heather from phoenix hi heather nancy from suffolk Field, Connecticut. Connecticut. Hi, Nancy. Woo, I hope it's cold out there. Okay. All right. So I think we ought to get started. We've got okay. people on YouTube. Oh, Andy from New York City. Is that Oh, hi, YouTube. Andy. We love New York City. And she's she's tuned in several times. So okay. Great. All right. You want to hop over there and just greet some people over there? I, can you do I that? I did. It's all oh, you did? Yeah, I can oh, do that. Oh, awesome. Here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Thanksgiving turkey. And there are so many awesome things you can do with leftover Thanksgiving turkey. The first one is going to be quite obvious. It's to make up a small pan. Now, this is going to depend on the size of your family. But now it's mostly just Steve -er and I, maybe just an occasional straggler. You know, I wouldn't use this for when the kids come over. When the kids come over, oh boy, that's a whole different story. But I took some leftover turkey and I put it in an 8 by 8 9 by 9 pan and I poured gravy over it. And I made two of these for Steve and I. And we'll eat these at a later date. And this will be probably at least two dinners for us and then some lunches as well. So that's the first obvious thing. Put it in a layered pan with the gravy. And I used to do, when all the kids were here, I used to do a 9 by 13 pan. That's the easiest, most obvious thing to do with your leftover turkey. And that fits with your strategy of cooking double. Yes, yes. Always cook double and put some it. away for next week so that cuts... That cooks your, cuts your cooking time in half. Okay, the second thing we did this year, now that all of our kids are married, they have families, they came over for Thanksgiving, we got to see three out of the five kids, which was great. Um, I saved these restaurant plastic containers, and I gave every family a container, and I said, go ahead and fill your container with food that you would like, let's left over from Thanksgiving, and you may take a container of food home. And then I had some um, pie plates, metal, metal or aluminum pie plates, and I let them each pick a couple of pieces of pie to take home. That considerably cut down 
on our leftovers that Steve and I had to deal with. And really, what's great is for Thanksgiving, everybody potluck. So everybody brings something. And so especially those people that do contribute, you want to send them home with a little something. Because if they're a single person or an elderly person, having a meal in a container is just a wonderful little treat to give them. So that's another way to cut way down on your Thanksgiving leftovers. Okay, so that's two. The okay, third. Pause. Okay, pause. We're gonna uh, stop and say hi to someone. We're gonna read some comments. Uh, okay. Anna says she saw an idea today for turkey fried rice. So that's oh. another idea is just add the leftovers into. Oh, I would never think of that, yeah. but that might taste good. Okay. Uh, Nancy says she had chicken parmesan for Thanksgiving. Oh. Day. Oh, chicken parmesan. Ooh, no, I love chicken parmesan. She could have done turkey parmesan with the leftovers. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then Laura Ann says, no shopping here. It's been 70 degrees. Oh, I just lost it. Uh, Where are you, Laura? Yeah, I don't know. She had a big walk with her 14-year-old son today. So that nice. Was, 70 degrees. You must be in a southern state or California or something like and that. And then our good friend Tara from Living on a Dime. Hi, Tara. She shared our video with her followers, so... Thank you, Tara, and, and hi to the whole Living on a Dime and Dining on a Dime family. And if you guys find this helpful or know someone... Yes, please share, um, because turkey leftovers are always something that has to be dealt with. And then when we get to the Black Friday haul, that will be an amazing thing. Okay. Okay, and then Brenda says, I put my turkey in the refrigerator on Saturday night to thaw. We can talk about thawing. Uh-huh. When I took it out Wednesday, it was still frozen solid. Uh -oh. oh, Brenda, you need to watch our video on how to thaw a turkey overnight. So what did she do? Luckily, I've watched your video about cooking a turkey oh, and doing yay! a salt bath. Yes. Yes, yes. It the saved my Thanksgiving dinner. Yay! <laughs> awesome, Brenda. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's it. So, oh, Laura's in Nebraska. 70 degrees in Nebraska. Wow. That's unusual. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. it's hot all across America. I don't know, but... We have relatives in Maine, and it's been pretty chilly up there. Okay. All right, so we've covered two things so far. We've covered taking your turkey, putting it in a pan with some leftover gravy um, for whatever size you need. There's many different sizes and many different size families. So if you have a large family, it might be a 9 by 13 pan or an 11 by 15 pan. If you have a smaller family, it might be um, an 8 by 8 pan or a 9 by 9 pan like this. Um you know, and if you're a single person, I just want to show some more examples. If you're a single person, then think about something like this. A very small casserole that you can put a turkey meal in. Um, because a, a small serving, if you're a single person, this could be excellent. You put, uh, you know, like two or th maybe three or four things for your turkey dinner and into the freezer it goes and then you pull it out when you're ready to eat it and you can eat off of it for two days. The, the idea is to pre-package it into smaller quantities that you can handle because if you just eat off of a big container, it will go bad before you can eat all of it. So it, stuff freezes nicely, put it in smaller containers and you're good to go. Okay, the next thing to do that I'm gonna show you is right here, turkey parmesan. Did you know that most of your chicken dishes you can substitute turkey for? They're interchangeable, they're poultry that are very close to each other. So I have a wonderful page of recipes on the website, moneysmartfamily.com slash recipe. Steve's gonna put that up. And that's where I have lots of dishes where you it says like chicken parmesan and all that kind of stuff but you can substitute turkey in those so i'm going to show you how to do that i cut up some turkey put it in a eight by eight pan now i'm going to take my homemade spaghetti sauce which is also on our vegetarian recipe page and i'm gonna i'm ladling spaghetti sauce on top of the turkey just like so i'm gonna moisten it and you know fill it in make sure it's really um plentiful because what i'll do is the night we eat this i will cook um like angel hair pasta or spaghetti or some other kind of pasta noodles and we'll eat the pasta noodles on the side with the um turkey parmesan that i'm making so it, this is a modified ver version of turkey parmesan and i think i came into it because when all of our kids were home and they were little why are you laughing well, Kathy's concerned about your health. She is? Yeah, she said you blew your nose and didn't wash your hands. 
Oh, thank you, Kathy. Let me do that. <laughs> you wash your hands probably 60 times I a day. I do. I wash my hands a ridiculous amount of times. Amanda says, do you notice that the turkey gets an odd flavor after a couple of days, or is that just me? Oh, no, I don't notice the odd flavor, but once again, we don't leave it in the refrigerator for many days at a time. So, um, so here is the spaghetti sauce with a plentiful amount of spaghetti sauce, so that if I cook some pasta noodles on the side, there's enough sauce for them as well. And the sauce is vegan. We had a question about that. So. Yes, the sauce is vegan, although I can and have cooked meat in it. Okay, so here is the, the turkey with the sauce. Now I'm going to take mozzarella cheese, and I'm going to sprinkle mozzarella cheese. And everybody says that differently, but, you know, when you're Italian and you're from New York, you can't say mozzarella. It just doesn't work. You have to say mozzarella. That's and you got to hold your fingers together that way. <laughs> That's what you have to say. Okay. Almost done. There we go. This is awesome. Oh, Kim joined us from Baghdad, Arizona. Oh, hi, Kim. How are you up there? And then Judy Rhodes joined us from our favorite consignment store. Yes, we'll be talking book. about that later on yes, and will. our special double feature. Yep. Okay. Oh my gosh. Somebody said it's uh, 27 degrees where they are. Oh, that's a little too cold for me. I would really like something right about in the 50s or 60s right now. <laughs> but we broke a record. Uh, <laughs> we broke a record yesterday. A record. It was uh, 87 and we had to actually turn on our swamp coolers, which is crazy. Now, no judging. This is a container of Parmesan cheese, and I didn't buy this. I told you, people give me food because they know that I can find a use to do with everything. So here is some Parmesan that a friend of mine gave me because, sadly, her mother passed away and she had to clean out her house. And so we've been loving it and enjoying it. So Parmesan goes on top. But you do have Parmesan. I do have Parmesan because a dear friend of ours actually gave us some. He's a food broker, and he gave us some. So here is... Voila! You're, can you see that good? Here is the turkey Let's, parmesan. We're going for a close-up view. Oh, will that mess everything up? Nope. nope okay. So, so simple and so delicious and so yummy. And basically, it takes 30 minutes to 40 minutes in the oven to melt the cheese and heat everything through. And in that time, you can cook up the pasta. You can open up a bag of salad. Um, or you can make a salad, or you can cook a vegetable, and okay. you have a complete meal. Now, you neglected to say something. Most people are going to say, but chicken parmesan yeah. is chicken breasts, pounded, breaded, and then covered. Right. And why is yours not that way? This is a modified chicken parmesan. And I started to say it, but somehow I got distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when all of our kids were little, and they were at home, um, <laughs> basically if Steve was late to get home for dinner, and, we all, late and we all sat down to dinner... I spent so much time cutting up all the kids' food that by the time I got to my food, it was stone cold. So, I had to, I, out of desperation, I came up with a new idea. And that new idea was to cook meat ahead of time. This was on cooking day, and that's in our grocery book. We need our three books. I'll go get the books. Okay, that was in our three books. I'll be right back. And um, basically, on once a month cooking day, you cook the chicken and the turkey ahead of time, and then you dice it up and make it into meals. So, this is a modified um, turkey parmesan because all the meat was cut up and pre-cut, so I could scoop it out and put it on the kids' plates and they could eat it. This is great for small children, like under eight years old. It's also great for elderly people because, um, you know, sometimes it takes a lot of effort to pull all that meat off the bone and separate the chicken. Um, and boneless, skinless chicken breasts are wonderful, but they can be costly. So if you work it like this, where you cook the meat ahead of time, debone it, and then cut it up, you can be eating poultry um, at its um, least expensive but most delicious stage. Okay, so there is the chicken parmesan. Yeah, and the idea for once a month cooking may sound overwhelming. Right. And what we encourage families to do is start with once a week. Right. Cook four or five meals in a day, and then you have them ready. And there's a couple that did this. They cooked their meals on the weekend, and he worked on the grill, and she worked in the kitchen. Cooked their lunches and their dinners. Right. And they cut their grocery bill in half. Right. Just by doing that one thing. But we encourage people to start simple. So the chapter five is tips on how to cook more efficiently. 
when we talk about cooking double, like right. Vanessa, you know, cut up the turkey and put it into a, a tray and then sa save it for later. Freeze right, it. Right. And you can pull it out weeks later. Uh, and then there's um, big batch cooking, and then there's once a month cooking, but you can start with once a week. Okay, so, so that's let, in the yeah, yeah. Cut your grocery right, bag. and we're running a special tonight. If you order all three books for us from us, not only do you get a super duper discount, not only do we sign the books for you, but we'll give you a free web membership. We have a web membership that has all of our forms on um, online on our website at moneysmartfamily.com, and we'll just throw that in as our Black Friday special. So let me just recap for you because we have people coming and going at all different times. Okay, we've talked about so far three different ways to deal with turkey leftovers. Number one is to put your turkey and your gravy in whatever size pan is good for you. Whether it's a 9 by 13 if you have a large family, an 11 by 15, an 8 by 8, a 9 by 9, or a small casserole with a little bit of every part of the meal right here if you're a single. Um, then that's number one. So pre-package your turkey after it's cooked into smaller increments. The second idea was everybody that comes and helps with the dishes, send, you know, save your restaurant containers, give one to each family and have them go through the buffet line where you put out all the fixings and make, make up a container to take home with them. Um, people just absolutely love that. And then I usually have separate aluminum or metal pie tins for every family to take two or three pieces of pie home with them. Okay, that's the second one. The third one, and it's on our website, moneysmartfamily.com slash recipes, and then you click on chicken main, dish. chicken main dishes, chicken turkey main dishes, was to turn your tur turkey into chicken, a modified chicken parmesan, a turkey parmesan. So that's the, the third one. The fourth one is going to be, I'm going to show you right now, um, we're going to make a pot pie. And now this is crazy because this has never happened, but because I sent each family home with their own to-go container, I actually have the least amount of turkey left over than I, that I have ever had. It was a 20 pound food. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do with, the, um, with this leftover, I'm going to show you how to make pot pie, only I'm going to use ham because I had frozen ham in my refrigerator. And this pot pie recipe is so very simple. You can do it with just about any meat. I mean, I suppose if you want to use pork, Italian sausage, chicken, turkey, I'm using ham tonight. But basically, um, I don't know if you all have noticed, but the frozen vegetables are getting smaller and smaller, the packages. So this is 10 ounces. But before Thanksgiving, I got a screaming deal on these. They were 49 cents a package, so I bought them. And so I am putting uh, mixed vegetables in here. And if I had more time today, I might cook up onions and celery. And um, I have some yellow cryptic squash, and I might throw that in. But I don't have the time right now. So what I am doing tonight is I'm just taking two 10-ounce packages of mixed vegetables. I am mixing in two cups of ham, diced ham, that I made up. And hang on, I gotta get a spoon. Now I am taking the spoon, I'm mixing it in. And actually that is, I have a, one extra cup of ham on standby in case this didn't look like enough. But it really does look like enough. Two cups of ham. And this is great for leftover chicken. It's great for turkey, obviously. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but it's so easy. And then I know people think that the cream of mushroom soups and cream of chicken soups are terrible for you. But if you don't eat them very often, you know, it's very, it, it should be okay. I need actually a smaller spoon for this. So I need to get a spoon. Um, but if you really just can't eat the cream of, I use a can of cream of chicken, you can, you know, make a white sauce, a thick white sauce that would work. Uh, let's see what else. I need this, the tall skinny one. Huh? I hope it's up there. It should be up there. Okay. My newest favorite tool. We should really have an Amazon link to that. That is amazing. Your amazing spoonula. My amazing spoonula that my dear friend got me 
for Christmas. She's amazing. She knows all the little tricks. Okay, so here we go. The, you know, food is a lot more forgiving than you think. It's a lot easier to put together. You just have basic ingredients. It's really hard to fail when you're putting food together. Because all the ingredients going in are yummy, so the consistency may not turn out correct, but um, it, it's going to be edible because everything going in is yummy. So here you go. Here is the guts, the filling for the, the chicken, what I would call the turkey pot pie. And as you noticed, I bought pie crust because once again, it's time or money and I don't have the time right now to roll out pie crust. And the pie crust was all on sale before Thanksgiving. So I always have one or two boxes of, of boxed pie crust in the refrigerator so I can put things together really quick. And because I'm saving money on the filling, it's, you know, it's okay. But if you have the time to make the pie crust and, you know, you have a harvest from your garden, it, it could work really nicely. Look at this. This is absolutely beautiful. And into the pie crust it goes. So did you say where that pie crust came from? I just said it was store-bought. Store yes, it is store-bought. I did say that. Okay, here we go. So a turkey pot pie. So basically this is a bag of mixed vegetables and it doesn't have to be the mixed vegetables I picked. It can be any vegetable medley in the frozen food case at the grocery huh? store. Um, if you use fresh vegetables, um, it's got to probably be um, cooked and eaten that day. If you want to freeze it for later, then you've got to cook those vegetables first before you put it in your pot pie. Okay, I'm going to use my mighty spoonula to scrape the bowl. I'm going to press everything in and have it kind of rounded up near the top. As soon as you finish that, we've got lots of people who are throwing out ideas. Okay, well let's, let's go over that. You guys can just watch as I'm putting the, the final touches on this because there's nothing, there's no rocket scientist to this. Go ahead, fire okay, away. Okay, let's see. Over on YouTube, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hello from Oregon. Hello uh, from Oregon. Let me put up a few okay, Lisa says she makes a turkey plate in a food, makes turkey pate. Ooh. In a food processor, ground carrots, celery, parsley, and add the turkey. Grind together, add mayo and a bit of salad dressing. This way it turns a pile of turkey into a plate. Oh, nice. So Andrea, Andrea liked that. And, okay. Uh, see. What do you do if you're making for one person like yourself? And you talked about that. Yes, so even, I did. Even this Here thing. it is. This little casserole dish. Fine little casserole dishes that you can put a little bit of a turkey dinner. Basically, you're creating your own TV dinner. So you're going to put your turkey and gravy, you're going to put your mashed potatoes, you're going to put your stuffing, you're going to put a vegetable, and then you're going to freeze it. And try to get as many of these as you can. They're, they're, it's so easy. Think in terms of scaling down. So maybe the average large family is going to be able to come up with one like 11 by 15 pan, whereas a single person can have a bunch of little glass containers. Oh, grab your Pyrex with the lids. Um, these are all on sale for Black Friday. Go out and buy a set of those Pyrex with the lids and make up all your dinners and stick them in the freezer. The round one with the red lid, sweetie. The round one with the red lid. Here, I'm gonna show you. If you're single, man, you've got it made. You have totally got it made because you can make uh, five to ten meals and pop them in the freezer. And you like glass. I love glass um, because it holds everything in the flavor inside and now it has all these lids so it's so easy to make a whole little meal like a TV dinner in this thing, pop it in the freezer and pull one out every couple of days to eat and there you go. Um, this also is like for your cranberry relish or your uh, you could uh, you can't really fit a piece of pie in here but anything fresh that you want to put in the smaller ones are great. So just make sure you have the right tools at home if you're single. You know, at this point, Steve and I are empty nesters, so we're scaling down, things are changing, and um, it's kind of fun. It's a new, 
It's a new phase. It's new things to discover. Okay, so I, I bought the pie crust because I knew this show would be busy tonight. And here I am. I'm going to finish off this, this turkey pot pie, which I actually made it into ham because I ran out of turkey, which is a first for the econs. And um, you can substitute any meat in this pot pie recipe and it will be delicious. Okay, so here we go. Um, have you all learned how to flute the edges on the pie crust? You take a double pie crust, you pinch it, you put two fingers on the bottom, one finger on the top. There you go. Pinching and fluting the pie crust together to make a beautiful pot pie. Easy peasy, delicious, comfort food, perfect for a cold winter day, hot out of the oven. Um, you can brush the top with a, a, a whipped up egg. You don't, it doesn't have to be just egg white. You can take the whole egg and just brush the top with egg and it gives you a nice golden crust and some yummy food. Now this cut, will cut into eight slices. Or, or more. No, eight, eight's about right for a pot pie because it's, it's an all-in-one dish. And then once again, if you're a single person, then freeze the individual pie pieces um, so that, you know, obviously the food does not go bad before you can eat it because you don't want that to happen. Okay, I'm going to jump in okay. and make a special announcement. Um, we're going to take a break after we're done with the show. We're going to finish up in about five minutes. Right. And then we're going to take a break and reset. We're doing a special edition. Tonight. Tonight. Yes. Because we um, we went out shopping last night after Thanksgiving. Because everybody left here on 8.30. They'd been here four and a half, five hours. We didn't kick them out. We just waited till everybody was gone. And then we oh, went out and had a ball <laughs> shopping. So will, here is so our... Gonna, so we're going to show you right. our Black Friday haul. Right. And we're going to actually tell you how much we spent and how much we save. Right. And, and, and but so it's going to take a little bit to get that set up. It's kind of ha had a start in getting set up. But we're going to wrap this up, and then we're going to reset Cause, everything. Cause we didn't get to bed until 1, 2 o'clock in 2 o'clock last night. And then we went out shopping this morning. So we are stimulating the economy, <laughs> and we want to show you what we got. Some great deals. Okay, so let me recap what we did um, so you all know. We have, oh, and I didn't talk about, hold on, before I recap, let me just say, turkey barley soup is one of my favorites. It is on our website, moneysmartfamily.com slash recipes. Under those turkey chicken main dishes, there's a turkey barley soup. I know most people have beef barley soup, but I make a turkey barley soup. And it's basically um, celery, onions, carrots, the turkey carcass, some turkey meat, um, some barley. You can throw beans in there. You can throw brown rice in there. And um, any other vegetables. It's a great soup to kind of clean out your refrigerator with stuff. And that's another great, great thing. And so, oh, I don't know if you all saved your turkey carcass, but it's a great thing to do to make a big pot of soup. It's wonderful for the winter time. Okay, couple okay. more comments. All right. Um, Kathy wants to know if the, the pie gets moist after it's baked. It looks good. but to, So I, I don't know what she's saying. Is the crust? The crust, good? yes. The crust can get moist. Um, but we haven't had a problem really. What you can do if you don't like the moist crust is uh, brush the bottom crust with egg and let it dry before you fill it. And then of course brush the top. So you can do both of those. And then Ohana Meka, I think she's from Hawaii. I can't Okay. Sure. Ohana. She uh, has a comment and then she has a question. Okay. She says make fried egg rolls filled with turkey stuffing cranberry sauce and dip it in gravy. Oh, that sounds so good. And then she Can said, we come to your house okay. to eat? And then she says, how many Thanksgivings have you spent together? Oh, okay. Well, we have this, we've been married 35 years. So, um, so it's about 37. 30, so it's probably 37. Because the, that's where I got the kiss of your grandmother. <laughs> no, that was on Easter. Oh, that's right. it was Easter. That was on Easter, the kiss of my grandmother. Yes. And so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, see, I haven't just been cooking turkeys for every Thanksgiving. We buy extra turkeys. And then when all the kids were at home still, I would cook one turkey every month. We would eat the turkey that night. And then we would repurpose the cooked turkey meat into those chicken dishes on once a month cooking day. And so, boy, I've cooked over 130 turkeys in my time. Um, lots of experience cooking turkeys. Okay, any other questions?
Uh, let me just look. Look, look, look. Uh, what can we? Oh, Stephen or Stephanie says that they do the container thing a lot. They send a lot of containers out, so that you're always saving yes, containers. Yes, yes. Um, sending people home with containers yep. is great. Yep. And we just had people tuning in from all over, from uh, okay. British Columbia, okay, um, Rhode Island, awesome, um, just all over. It's so great it's to have you guys. Good. Okay, so I'm gonna recap. I tried to do that. We got distracted. So I'm gonna recap the turkey. Five ways to deal with your leftover turkey. One. Put your turkey and gravy together in small, whatever size pan fits for your household. If you're single, it may be those single serving Pyrex things um, to put your turkey and gravy in. Or it may be more like this, where you put a, a little bit of your whole turkey meal in. So put turkey and gravy in a leftover container. That's number one. Number two was, you know, send family members home with a takeaway which a lot of people are talking about that's number two number three is make turkey a modified turkey parmesan it's a chicken parmesan recipe but it's nothing is breaded nothing is fried it's just diced turkey meat with spaghetti sauce and mozzarella cheese mm -hmm. and parmesan cheese on the top and and it cook, takes 30 to 40 minutes heat up in the oven you cook pasta on the side you have a vegetable or a salad and you're good to go and then the final one well, the fourth one is the turkey pot pie, which is yummy. It's just like a chicken pot pie, and it's basically frozen mixed vegetables, any combination with a can of cream of chicken soup and two cups of diced turkey in a, a double pie crust. And then the final one was to make a big pot of turkey barley soup using your turkey carcass and then um, carrots and onions and celery barley you could throw beans in you could throw brown rice you could throw other vegetables and that is really yummy for this time of year especially for those folks that said it was 20 degrees outside like in where was that connecticut like this would be a really good thing for you to be eating right now okay so we are going to take a break it's a double feature tonight but we need time to reset the cameras and the lights we're going to move to a different room so we will be back in, in about, about 30 minutes 30 minutes and so, so we'll grateful see. for you guys. Thank yes. you. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Right. And, and remember, we're running a Black Friday special right now. It's our three books. Our first book, which is our New York Times bestseller, America's Cheapest I Family Gets You Right on the Money, <laughs> Cut Your Grocery Bill in Half, which has recipes, and The Money Smart Family System, Teaching Financial Independence to Children of Every Age. If you buy a three-book bundle for $35, we sign it, and you get a free web membership, which is worth $20. And that free web membership allows you to have access to all of our forms. We have nifty, nifty forms. And um, thank you for joining us. It was awesome being with you. And we will be back in about 30 minutes to go over our Black Friday haul. And you will not believe what we got last night because I don't even believe what we got last night. And that takes some doing. Okay. See you all. Good night. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Wait. Okay.